some hedge fund managers earn exorbitant amounts of money each year. What is their secret sauce? How do they do it? Let's take a look. Today we're going to take a closer look how some of the largest hedge fund managers earn this exorbitant amount of money each year and yeah, Forbes magazine uh, each year publishes the list of the highest earning managers and the top three places or managers usually earn two, three or even four billions a year, which is an enormous amount of money. And we took some time to dig into the numbers to see how they actually manage to generate this huge uh, fees for them. And what we found out actually that we have maybe we could say uh, three different groups of these managers. The first group are actually we could call them geniuses. One such example is uh, Mr. James Simmons, founder of Renaissance Technologies, a quant fund manager with approximately 15 billion of assets under management and their flagship medallion fund um, was established in 1988 and generated 72% uh, return per annum in this period, which is an astounding uh, uh, profit or result and had only one negative year. This was their first year when they were still testing some things and from then on it was only positive years despite the market conditions. And how do they do it? Actually, they have a team of more than 90 physicists and math PhDs who are really looking for signals in the market and for the market inefficiencies and they use super strong computers. They have one of the most powerful super supercomputers in the world actually. And yeah, this is the way how they do it. So it's really hard to, let's say, uh, try to copy their approach in the market. And James Simmons' current net worth is actually 20 billion. He's slowly retiring, but they're one of the top, definitely. Another such example of a brilliant mind is Mr. Ray Dalio, who is the founder of the world's biggest hedge fund firm, uh, Bridgewater Associates. They manage approximately 160 billion US dollars and they're known for a culture of radical transparency. Uh, so they really have a stellar investment process and they generate, we could say, stable returns throughout the market, which is really hard to do with such a large amount of money, 160 billion US dollars. But they still have sometimes, let's say, not so good, good results. But anyway, Mr. Ray Dalio's net worth is over 18 billion US dollars and he's one of the richest people in the world. This was the first group of geniuses and now we'll go to the second group of people and let's see how we can call them a bit later. One such example is Steve Cohen, founder of SAC Capital, one of the most successful hedge fund firms. We generated over 30% net returns per annum and he was considered one of the best managers, but there are some, let's say, not great practices. And in 2014, after seven years of investigation from the SEC in the US, the company pleaded guilty to insider the trading. They had to pay 1.8 billion fine and was ordered to return client capital. And Mr. Steve Kong himself was uh, actually received a four year ban on managing other people's assets. So yeah, they actually managed to generate huge returns, but as we can see, they used some illegal practices like insider trading. And later he managed his own money for the last four years and he had very poor results. So how should they call this group? I don't really know, but yeah, they are using some illegal practices. Another such example in this group is Daniel Och of the Och Ziv Capital Management, uh, which is a company which manages 32 billion US dollars. And for example, this company used investor funds to bribe government officials in several African countries for uh, real estate deals, uh, mining deals, oil exploration. And again, SEC and other um, agencies dwelled into it and found these irregularities um, and they also had to pay a fine and Mr. O himself had, had to pay a fine. And after this scandal broke out, the company had huge outflows and is now managing way less capital than it managed before. Now we can move on to the third group where the majority of fund managers actually are. Uh, this group, in short, are people who 
were doing okay managing the money and then had one or two huge successes and this drew a lot of capital to them but then of course they went back to the let's say mean and lost a lot of capital let's take a closer look at two of the examples one is bill ackman one of the most probably prominent or known hedge fund managers in the world um, pershing square capital management is his company and he made some years ago some really good moves and rescued one a mall app operator in the states and generated huge returns with it and after that received a lot of money from investors um, but then he went astray did some not so nice deals for example with valent pharmaceuticals uh, where he lost four billion US dollars and actually had to settle with the sec uh, on insider trading some against some sort of illegal practices and in the last three years he severely underperformed the stock market and lost a lot of the clients money and another such example is john paulson uh, founder of paulson Co company it was a small niche hedge fund until 2017 when he actually put on his so-called big short um, he made a fortune betting against the prime mortgages so against the real estate market in at the peak of the 2007 credit bubble and earned 3.7 billion that year which was an exorbitant amount so after this huge result again many investors came to him he managed 36 billion at the top uh, but in recent years his fund struggled and actually in 2018 he mo more or less managed only his own money so this is actually a pattern that we can see all the time as i said again so there are some decent managers with normal nothing special returns and then they have one or two successful bets which enables them to earn a huge amount of money the next step is that a lot of institutional investors see these results they want to join they want to also generate from his extraordinary skills which are actually not there probably so they receive a lot of cash for example in the case of john paulson at the top he managed 36 billion us dollars and for example if a manager has a standard two percent management fee per annum this means that he generated fees of 720 million us dollars even if he wouldn't generate any return for the clients and in the next years his assets under management decreased to approximately 8 billion US dollars of which 6 billion is his own money really and how do they do it the hedge fund managers usually the what connects all of them really is the high fees the standard fee in the hedge fund industry is 2% management fee and the second thing is the 20% performance fee so they get 20% of the profits they generate and of course it's much easier to make a lot of money with these high fees and if you have one or two fortunate moves you can really earn billions of uh, of money and for the end to end so again we have three groups we could say some geniuses which we cannot copy unless we are genius ourselves then we have people with some let's say illegal practices and then we have people who are nothing special but occasionally make a great move and this enables them to earn a lot of money and what's funny to see the institutional investors are moving from one such fund managers to another after somebody strikes a, let's say a great investment makes a great investment earns a lot of money hedge, uh, the investors see that result and move there and then again he does nothing special in the next year there is some other manager who does a great result investors move there and all the time they pay a lot of fees for not so special performance but this is the human nature even on the institutional level is the same even these institutional uh, funds are managed by humans by hu people like you and me and they do the same mistakes that we do so what is the formula for, for success of these fund managers it's actually the high fees and this is how they earn this exorbitant amount of money and the reality is actually over the longer period the majority of hedge funds underperform the stock market and this is something we already explained in our another video on the warren buffett's one million dollar bet where you can see this in more detail so that's it for today's market insight uh, please feel free to post some comments let's start a debate and be sure to follow us on other uh, social channels uh, channels where we regularly post content and see you soon thanks bye <music>